Okay, so we're live. Um, okay, let's get right into it. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. It is uh, 1205 uh, and we uh, do have a quorum. Um, do we have anybody here from the public uh, that wishes to say anything or share anything with us today? Denise, you'd be able to see more than I if there's any hands or whatnot. There's not, what? Mark. Okay, great. All right, um, is Tom Pentelo on the call with us? I don't see him. No. Okay. Um, well, uh, I know we talked about uh, an election uh, of vice chair. Um, I apologize. I know, I think a couple months ago, I guess um, uh, that was not covered in that particular meeting. I know Tom um, is not here. Uh, Bonnie, maybe you can give me some direction. Um, I'm not sure if he was interested in, in nominating himself again or not? Um, I have no idea. Um, so, I mean, you can either have someone else be vice chair or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Um, I feel confident that we could go maybe another week or two without a vice chair on the on EDIC RDA, unless that legally we need to have somebody associated. That's fine. Are you okay with that? If, if Tom, I don't want to do anything without speaking with Tom, and I just noticed this on the agenda uh, today, so I'd like to speak with him first. And if not, I'd be more than happy, obviously, to bring in um, a vote for a vice chair. Are we okay with that as a group? Okay. All right, guys. Uh, Denise, let's start um, with the development project updates. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a few of the highlights. Um, last week at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, the self-storage facility was approved for 46 Arrow Road. Um, the Porter and Chester facility at 1210 Silas Dean was approved by both the Wetlands Commission and the Planning and Zoning Commission at their last meetings. Um, staff is continuing to work with some issues the applicant is having for 245 Main Street, the former Masonic Hall. Um, we did just previous to this meeting meet with um, a potential developer who is interested in the property at 341 Jordan Lane. Um, Mark, I don't know if you want to give any more details. Nope, nope, nope. nope. Okay. That's enough. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, the Design Review Commission approved last night a facade improvement for the former Rite Aid on the Silas Dean Highway, they're looking to locate their in International Institute of Cosmetology. So that's gone through design review um, and they're planning to submit for a facade through EDIC and then it will go to planning and zoning for a change of use. Do you know what they'll be asking for? I assume it'd be the max in light of that project. I, I'm assuming it will be the max. Okay, what do we have in the coffers on that program right now? Oh, uh, you have 117, I think it was. Okay. Okay. Uh, that, that ties into something we'll talk about in a little bit. 117.731. Uh, okay. Thank you, Bonnie. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions on another specific property. Any other questions from the group on any other property? Um, we did have, go ahead, Judy. Meeting my lunch. Uh, last time that I was at a meeting, a thousand Celestine Highway, there was somebody that was interested or it had changed hands. Anything new on that? I know Mark and Joya had met with um, AJ last month. I know Joya had reached out with him just last week. I don't know that there's really any update at this point to report. Um, it's it's a it's quiet, um, which means there's there's no progress, but there's no torture at the moment. Um, but um, I don't like a lot of quiet, so we're trying to get um, it unquieted, if you will. Um, uh, Joy, did you put did you reach out to AJ last week? I did, and um, I have a better response when I email him, which I did. He told me he was in the process of setting up a meeting with the new owner. Um, and he would get back to me as soon as that had happened. I have not heard from him yet, so. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll continue to follow up, you know. The, uh, the, good news is, the, the good news is that there's some positive smoke 
um, on, on that deal, which is a good thing. Um, uh, we don't know exactly what the game plan is, but as I mentioned in the last meeting, the taxes have, that which were in the back, uh, were in the rears have been paid on the property. Um, from what I understand, it's a pretty well-heeled organization that bought it, but I think there's just some wrinkles they're ironing out, uh, very normal. I will say uh, um, we did have an earlier meeting today on 341 Jordan and Bonnie, I'm not gonna talk about the deal, but I did wanna mention that it did come up in conversation from the people we were talking to that Weathersfield is being viewed by other developers as a great place uh, to come in and work with that the PNZ, um, um, uh, the entire process, if you will, has been a good experience. So I know when I first joined over 10 years ago, um, EDIC, there was, a, there was a stigma around the town of Weathersfield as being kind of difficult to work with, but both the deals that recently were improved, um, the Porter and Chester building um, and others, none of them were smooth, but there were things that were ironed out by the Weathersfield team and by EDIC to help make those projects go forward. So we're on record and we're do, doing a good, a, good, a good thing. We're being viewed as a, as a very pro-development town um, within reason, obviously, but I think I just wanted to mention that that did come up in this conversation earlier today. Denise, that concludes development project updates. Is that right? That's right. Okay, great. I know we were talking um, with, um, with Brooke um, and with WEC on that baby bag partnership, and I haven't done anything or even thought about it, frankly, uh, since the last uh, meeting. Um, so, so I'm only bringing it up. I was able to collect samples from both groups um, and get a little bit of a better handle on how they are notified and, and how they're distributing the bags. I just wanted to bring it up because um, they are available to meet either uh, next Wednesday or Thursday morning. And I wanted to see if Judy or anyone else might be interested in uh, meeting with me and them and um, to schedule that for next Wednesday or Thursday. Judy, I see you're eating your lunch, so, okay. Um, Judy and Morella. Yep. Are either Wednesday or Thursday morning better for you? It looks like they're either doing a crossword puzzle or checking. <laughs> Morella, is that, uh, you're on mute, Morella, and so are you, Judy. Uh, Wednesday, I could do. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm on now. Yeah, I could do Wednesday. Wednesday okay, perfect. Yeah. I'll okay, reach out to time? both of you. Okay, um, so, probably okay. about 8.30. All right. That's uh, how about 9? Nine? 9 o'clock is fine. 9. Okay. okay. Denise, I have a yeah. meeting at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Okay. So if you need me there, just keep that in mind. Okay. I could also do later. Um, I have an appointment at eight. That's why I'm. I'm wide open on Thursday morning if that helps. Judy, would Thursday work for you? No. No. Okay. Okay. Joy, I could probably handle it for now and then we'll start back. Okay. No problem. Yep. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be around next week, um, but anything that comes out of that, if somebody could just give me a note on what, what you guys collaborated on, that'd be great. Absolutely. Um, great. Uh, facade program update. This was kicked around over the last week um, in between Bonnie and Joya and Denise and Tom uh, and myself to a degree. And um, I, I think this kind of got left uh, in the wind a little bit um, uh, with the new change. Um, uh, and I think we need to just come to a consensus on, are we comfortable with the modifications that we made? I know Tony added um, some information to us on, on that as well, M meant to mention you as well, Tony. As I recall, we were, there were two items that I remember specifically. One was the language around grant or loan need to be tightened up. And the other item was uh, the number of um, quotes that we needed to get uh, for facade improvement, that the, our language does say three. Um, and I know Bonnie had uh, spoken with uh, Mike O'Neill earlier today, Bonnie, is that right? Mm -hmm. In his response. Um, I am a layman and I, I love being a layman sometimes because I get to ask stupid questions that maybe uh, I, that I wouldn't normally be able to ask. But I know that the EDIC is a separate program. It's funded by STEEP. It's not necessarily taxpayer money directly from the town. 
are we still encumbered by the the sealed bid and that thirty seven thousand dollar number, Bonnie? Even though EDIC is funded by Steep, because um, what Bonnie had shared with me that based on the current charter, we are required to get three um, quotes. And I just didn't know if there was a gray area here or not on that, Bonnie. Maybe there is not. No, you need. To, you know, you're going to need to do the three, even with um, government. Uh, bids or any kind of funding that's any program, we still have to go through that process. So, you know, you're going to, I mean, but if you can't get it, you just have to justify why you cannot get it, whether it's the economic reality of today, but the developers got to show just like the staff does that they've tried to reach out to three different companies and here were the responses. Okay. All right. Well, if that's it is that that if that's lock solid, then uh, I mean rock solid. Then we don't have a, a question to modify that needs to stay in three uh, quotes. Um, Joy, I think there was a couple of other small items. I think you did a um, uh, you took a pass at it yourself on other items that you got. And by the way, I'd like to is Mr. Obian still on the call here with us? Yeah. Uh, yes, he's here. I don't see. Him. Oh, there he is, uh, Adam. Um, we um, stole all of the stuff that you gave us regarding that last meeting. Um, and um, you did a marvelous job uh, on that. And we'd like to say thank you for that work because it actually, as you get older, you, you're a very young person and I'm, a, I'm an older person. We lose our memories and, and we need people like you to write things down and, and do a good job and we appreciate it. So thank you for your work that you did on that. Um, My pleasure. Julia, uh, there was a couple other items in that. Um, what were those yeah. other than the two that I mentioned? Okay, a couple of things we had talked about, which you may want to just set up a subcommittee meeting, a finance committee meeting to review this. Um, I don't know if we should have a full open discussion today, um, but a couple items. We were cognizant of the fact that we have about 117,000 left in the program right now. It hasn't, there's no additional funding at this point. Uh, so one of the things we talked about was reducing a grant amount from the 50,000 max, uh, exploring those options so we don't run out of money quickly. Uh, the other thing was adding application fee reimbursement at closing, which I noticed is in uh, kind of the language of a draft I have. And I don't know if this had been updated already. So something to look at um, because it also doesn't bridge the grant loan. It, it refers to this as a funding program and it is a grant now. So I have a, a document that shows that. Um, one of the things we had looked at other towns and there is a PowerPoint presentation that summarizes it in a 58 page document showing what other towns do. Um, and one of the questions that came up was to review eligible improvements and make sure that they are clear and appropriate for this program. Make sure there's nothing, no, nothing we're going to pay for that doesn't clearly fit the spirit of this program. Okay. Uh, and then the bid requirement, which is, is settled. I think we can check that box um, on the bid requirement, yeah. obviously. Um, so I agree with you. I don't think there, there's too much for discussion on that today. We should have a subcommittee meeting. Um, uh, next week, unfortunately, I'm not going to be around. When do you, will you expect a facade um, uh, uh, request from the um, uh, cosmetology folks? I think you're try trying to say, uh, anybody, are you aware, Denise? I'm sorry, Mark, I just had somebody walk into the office. What was oh. the question? Question regarding a, a, a potential fod, a facade improvement uh, application. Yes. Do you know how far away we are on that? Are we? Um, I mean, they they went to design review last night and uh, the, the uh, proposal was approved. So um, in terms of commission approvals, they're ready to submit, but I do know that they're still um, looking for the three bids. Okay, so we probably have some time. Yeah. Uh, all right, so are, are you guys okay with trying to schedule something the following uh, week? So the uh, the week of the 17th to the 21st is not good. Um, the week of the 24th would be the next available week. I'd like to be involved in this if you guys don't mind. Um, 
how is um, we uh, we potentially have a EDIC um, new members review on Monday the twenty fourth. Correct, Julia. At, the, at yeah, nine o'clock, yes. At yeah, we're looking for the orientation that day. Yep. Um, oh, I've got a commitment that morning, and I'm wondering if we could possibly move that to ten o'clock um, that day, if that's possible, um, or find another day because I would like to be there, but I am committed till about nine thirty that morning. Um, and I can't get out of that. Um, so that ties in, I'm trying to schedule a meeting as well. If we can do that on the 24th um, as well. Um, and if it's by Zoom, you know, and people can, uh, can just pop in like this. Can I propose that maybe we look at um, uh, 11 o'clock on Monday the 24th for a um, meeting regarding uh, facade improvement? That okay? Anybody? That works for me, but okay. <clears throat> so let's get that on the calendar now. Okay. I can send out an invite right after the meeting. Great. Thank you. Don't worry, Mr. Ovian will remind us. <laughs> Joy, um, had you um, just one quick thing, Mark? Joy, had yes. you sent out the time for the orientation already? Because I know people plan their calendars too. Yeah, um, I don't think we sent out an invite yet. We were okay. going to verify that this morning that uh, at this meeting, I apologize, that 9 a.m. would work or if a, a better time. And okay, uh, Mark, just, Mark just let me know 10 a.m. So hopefully we can switch yeah. it to that. By the way, guys, if that's the only date that works for a number of people, I don't have to be there. I just wanted to be there, but I certainly don't have to be there. Um, okay. So if that time doesn't work out, I understand. Okay. All right, good. Um, so with regards to the facade program update, there's a number of things that we'll be looking at at that meeting on the 24th. Um, Denise, if you wouldn't mind just putting together a bullet point list of the items that still, um, or Joya, whomever, um, yep. a bullet point list on the things that we need to talk about on that day that people can look at prior. Um, sure. because I'd like to bring it to a head and get a vote on that um, um, as soon as possible. Okay, great. Okay, ARPA funds. Excuse me, a tax incentive update. Um, you guys have a copy of the um, ordinance revising the tax incentive policy and program dated January 4th. Um, thank you for the work that you that you did on that. Um, uh, the um, adjustments to the incentive program uh, were adopted by the town council. Uh, it was moved by Ken Lesser, it was seconded by uh, Dan O'Connor, uh, which was nice to see someone from both sides of the aisle on that, which was awesome. Um, um, so thank you for the work on that. That is now law, uh, law if you will. So we're in good shape uh, there. Any questions regarding the tax incentive policy and the revisions that we made? We good? Great. Um, okay, ARPA funds, um, a, a fun topic. Uh, the uh, There was a list that I sent out to, um, to the mayor and to Ken and to a couple others. Um, Denise, I don't know if, uh, or Joy, if you guys have it, I could put it up on my screen. Um, if you don't have it, um, I can find it, I think, and get it up myself and just uh, share the screen with you. Are you guys okay with that? Yes, I've, I've put it so you can share the screen. Okay, great. Bear with me for one second. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right, um, so the following list here, I know I, I um, in, these are some, I did clearly just some ideas um, that I've had in talking to uh, people on council and other people in town that we put together. Um, uh, these are, but I'm gonna claim that these are pretty much my thoughts. Some of these might be horrifically horrible ideas. Some might be amazing, I don't know. Um, but I, we need a place to start. Um, as you know, Bonnie has set aside, or, or just to, to let you know, I believe $600,000 for EDIC, RDA. Unlike, other, unlike, is that right, Bonnie? Or is it more than that? Oh uh, Yeah, but you have to remember, it's not up to me, it's up to the council. 
right. That was my next my next. I was going to say. Um, as as you know, unlike other uh, departments in town, we don't have um, HVAC that we need to improve or um, any of the hardcore um, items. Um, uh, we never had a list. You know, our list basically was going to CIP, trying to find uh, forty or fifty thousand dollars for our facade improvement program. That's really been the only asks we've ever had. Um, unlike the other departments in town that have physical things that need to be updated or purchased or whatnot. So we need to be able to show the council um, that we have some meaningful ideas to support the 600,000 that Bonnie has, uh, has set aside. It is not our money yet. Um, uh, so we need to, as a group, come together with some ideas and concepts that we can promote to the council um, that um, have merit um, and fit within the purview of either EDIC or the uh, redevelopment agency. So these, I'll just go through them. And again, I think that following that, that top piece is very important that is for informational purposes at this point, many of the ideas here and concepts are gonna require further thought on viability, pricing, et cetera, but there are areas in my view that need to be addressed and we, it would be potential areas for us to use ARPA funds. All these potential projects will be needed to be reviewed by other members of the EDIC RDA. And again, I apologize for any grammar and typos on this. Um, this was done purely on me, no administrative help whatsoever. Um, one of the things, and it's a kind of a generic one, is that the a targeted investment program, um, um, there's some documentation that I got from the mayor regarding things that, uh, that New Haven is doing, um, which I thought was very, very interesting reading, um, uh, which I'll get to. Um, but they talked about a couple of things. One was called the Economic Resilience Fund, um, and another one was a land bank for New Haven. And that document was sent to you in the email uh, from Denise under ARPA and New Haven. And that TIP program is kind of what I think would be our view, or at least in its current state, a way for us to find a, with an appreciable chunk of money, a way to help sweeten a deal with a potential developer or owner of a property. Um, so that's just, a, again, a generic idea. Um, obviously repl replenishment of the facade improvement program um, is important. Um, I know, and I want to talk to you, Bonnie, about this. Um, I know that this is not necessarily a uh, EDIC or RDA particular item. The third one there, Townwide Communications and Social Media Director. Um, I was proposing that either us or other different or the other divisions in town maybe collectively um, figure out a way that we put that communications person in town as a full-time employee. We are incredibly lacking um, in town on communication. Um, to social media. It's kind of ad hoc. Each department does, I think, the best that they can, but none of them are experts on it. And, and this is a, you know, from the social media perspective, there's a lot, way, a lot of more ways that we can be communicating to the town, which makes us uh, more economically viable as a town if we have great communication with the business community and the, um, uh, the residents of town. And that's one of the areas that I know, Bonnie, we said that we're not supposed to use money for anything that's not reoccurring, but what we were suggesting, what, and what they say, you, if you did it, you need to make sure that you had funding for it after the first go round, that you could use the money for this, but we need to make sure that it, if it was a one-year program or two-year program that we were funding using ARPA funds, that there was gonna be budget, a natural budget and line item for it down the, in the future. I'm bringing it up only because I know that it's, in my opinion, it's extremely necessary that we have something and again, maybe it doesn't, it won't work under this, uh, this ARPA scenario, but it is something that the town needs to think of because I think from an economic perspective and development perspective and improvement perspective, um, it hits the mark on those three things for EDIC. Um, next on was a, what we're calling a South Scene Highway Friendly Corner Program. Um, there is a lot of conversation. Um, um, Cindy Jacob um, has done who is a counselor, she's on vacation this week and that's why she couldn't be with us to share some, some stuff, um, is, is on this along with some um, other counselors are turning some rocks over on this. Um, this we're calling just, it's an aesthetic improvement um, of the town that we're looking to potentially put um, lighted posts, solar lighted posts uh, that can bear banners and flags along the major uh, intersections um, of Knott Street, Church Street, Wells, Maple, Mill, and Town Line Road. Um, just a way to kind of warm up 
um, the experience on the South Dean Highway. It's not going to ease traffic. It's not going to con traffic, um, but it is, would make it a more of a um, aesthetically pleasing ride. And aesthetics do mean things. You know, if you if you have a house and you paint it, it's worth more money. It doesn't do a lot to the structure of the house, but if it just looks better, um, it does have a benefit. Um, so I know that we are looking for something that we can do on South Dean Highway until we get our hands around DOT and some of the other items um, that we'll talk about in, in today's meeting. Um, that is one particular concept um, that we have. Um, we talked about traffic coming measures in, in Old Weathersfield um, uh, the, um, as another item. Um, and I'm not gonna, it's pr pretty self-explanatory. I'll let you guys read through this stuff. Um, and there's some interesting links regarding that. Um, and on a, a minor item, program garbage cans in Old Weathersfield. You know, with more people will be more trash um, and maybe having a more unison way of uh, getting garbage handled uh, in Old Weathersfield, um, maybe a decent item. Um, the next one is, is the, which I'm calling the radar, is basically a way to kind of augment the facade improvement program, which doesn't really cover anything inside a, a business. And it's a way um, to potentially um, inject money directly into some of the restaurants in town, which as you guys know, the restaurant industry, maybe more than any other industry suffered most significantly during um, COVID. Um, things are bouncing back now, uh, luckily, but um, that's just another particular concept. I view that as a matching grant a type of concept as well, uh, similar to the facade improve, improvement program. Um, we, we are um, having some great conversations regarding Weathersfield and, and the parking behind engine one. Nothing is, there's, it's far from having a bow put on it, uh, but there's great discussion on it. Uh, there's funding um, uh, that we think potentially that is available. Again, there's, the, the, um, there's always hiccups and no pun intended speed bumps uh, that you have to deal with. But one of the things that we're thinking about is that we can build a lot, but it will require maintenance to uh, people to stay on top of it, to plow it, um, to maintain it, et cetera. Um, and that link under the Old Westville Pay to Park, I don't know if you guys have ever gone to Middletown, but behind Main Street is a big open lot. They have a kiosk there. You punch in your credit, your credit card number and your plate number, and it's all electronic, and it's a way for them to um, cover parking um, expenses on that particular lot. Um, just another, again, potential idea. Uh, and last but not least, uh, an internship program. Again, not really sure how this would really um, it really doesn't go into this ARPA thing, but it's just something that was on my mind. Um, I, I don't know who would run it, how it would be funded, um, but I know that we have a significant stress on town staff right now in every department. Um, it, um, and if we had an internship pro program, that um, maybe that could help alleviate that and it could be a win-win uh, for the town. Um, so. I share these things with you guys. Um, we need to meet again. This probably be more, it'll be just a, a, a separate ARPA subcommittee meeting, I guess we would do. Um, but we need to sit down as a team and figure out uh, where we can invest um, and get some bang for our buck. And one of the key words from the town council is that they were looking for things that the community could visually see and appreciate. Um, there's a lot of stuff improving um, an HVAC system in one of our buildings. It's not something that people see. It's extremely important, but they're looking for something that the town can look at and, and appreciate. So just kind of keep that in mind, because again, I'm not sure if the council is going to say, okay, um, EDIC, RDA, we are approving the funds and we're going to let you um, do with it what you think is right, or we may have to go back to them individually with each project. I think that's still being discussed. It certainly isn't cement at this point. Is that right, Bonnie? It's that isn't really have any been discussed yet. Is that right? No, no. The council decided to have a subcommittee, but the, um, we haven't gotten those names yet. Okay. Um, so I these again could be all horrific, or maybe there's a, a one or two good ones in there. But I'm I'm asking you guys um, uh, to um, come up with additional ideas. Uh, that could be utilized uh, for this. Um, and we need to present to the town because again, it's not, the money is set aside or it's, it has not been allocated, but it's been, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you, there's a placeholder, financial placeholder on the money, but it's not our money um, until we can show the council that we can do something 
uh, solid with it. So I would ask everybody on the uh, EDIC and RDA uh, to begin to formulate some ideas and we'll have to get a meeting scheduled on that very quickly. Um, am I no Mark, longer sharing my screen? Mark, I don't know whether you wanna refer that to the finance committee since instead of forming a whole new other committee. Um, well, that would be applying logic, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, Bonnie? Um, uh, so, just yes. a thought. <laughs> uh, the short answer is yes. The, um, uh, we could just take them, put this under finance committee. That makes perfect sense. Mark, can you circulate that to me? I'd like to see it, just so I have a copy of it as well. I have some thoughts. Sure. I would like um, to uh, too. Thank you. If you guys could, um, I think Joya or Denise, I think you guys have that copy. If you wouldn't mind distributing, I'll that. distribute it to everyone. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. EDIC orientation date. Oh, any other questions? I'm sorry on the ARPA funds. Okay. Um, EDIC. Can I, uh, Joya, can you just make sure we cover ARPA under orientation? These poor people probably don't even know what we're talking about. A lot of the yeah. new members are probably thinking, what are we talking about here? So I could address yes, that I will, um, orientation. Okay, I will. And I'll put it on the the meeting we have to go over facade right now. Sure. Um, even if it's just a matter of everyone turning in their ideas, it, you know, depending on how long facade takes, but if it doesn't take the full hour, maybe we can touch upon some of this. And I think Bonnie wanted you to talk a little bit more about the EDIC orientation itself. Is that what you're referring to, Bonnie? No, no, no. I was just saying that uh, there's so many new members, and if you've never been involved in government, we start throwing around these acronyms, and nobody oh. knows what we're talking about. Okay. So I just thought ARPA and COVID money, it would be good if we kind of covered it quickly. Um, sure. Um, the ARPA funding uh, is the American Recovery um, Program Act. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I call it COVID. I call it COVID money, it just makes it easier. And just so everybody knows, if I don't really know what I'm talking about, I just make up an acronym and people just usually shake their heads. Um, so that's my, you're on to me. Um, ARPA is money that is, was a, um, a wave of funding that was um, sent to the federal government. I was surprised uh, the mayor sent me something from New Haven. I think New Haven got 120 million. I think obviously they're a much bigger community than we are. Uh, we received roughly $7 million from the federal government. Um, uh, the initial, um, the initial um, uh, focus of the money was to fund projects that were specifically related to COVID issues, uh, where we could spend money where the community, either business or residential, was impacted by COVID, that we could use this, that's where recovery came from, recovering from that COVID, from COVID related issues. Um, there was a portion uh, or in the legislation um, in, this ARPA fun, uh, in this ARPA money was if the town could show a loss um, due to COVID related items that the money um, that we could show, uh, we can match our losses to the ARPA funds and we could use the ARPA funds for things outside of direct COVID related items, um, which uh, we're um, in this way, I think almost three quarters of it or 80% of it, we were able to show uh, that with the town had lost revenue and we were able to use this money for other projects outside of COVID, all important projects, but candidly speaking, just personally speaking, we were having a hard time, frankly, at the beginning, um, finding enough projects that were directly impacted by COVID. Um, so this actually became kind of a godsend for us because as a community, we actually, you know, it still was horrific, but it was, we fared well than many other communities um, in a lot of respects. So that's ARPA money. Um, what was the other acronym that you thought we should um, talk no, about? That, that was the biggest one. And we can cover all that during orientation too. Okay, great. You know what would be helpful for me as maybe everybody else too, is all the uh, an acronyms that you can think of that might be used. I'm thinking like CROG and all these others. It, it would be helpful to have like a dictionary, a little uh, <laughs> list of, of all the, uh, the different and acronyms that we use. You know, uh, some of them are be, very it, similar. It could be like a book, Judy, but yeah, we'll try. <laughs> uh, the, just the ones that we use on a regular basis. 
You know what the best one was? I'll just take two seconds. When I was here before, um, lower underground storage tanks. Remember that was a big deal where you had to take them all out? And Lust. it was called, the program was called Lust. That was a, um, we used the Lust program on the development that we did in town. We yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Tanks. But I, um, everybody used to have, a, you know, it was like, oh my God, now look at government. We're even down to using the term Lust. <laughs> Bonnie, do you remember um, before Comstock was the heirloom? It was the Save Our Barn, the SOB. Oh yeah, that's right. I <laughs> forgot about that. So sometimes we get a little, you know, out of whack. But yeah, we'll do that, Judy. That would be helpful to everybody, I think. Oh, I agree. We'll do that, PDQ. <laughs> okay, um, Southstein Highway Committee. I did touch base a little bit on that. Um, I don't know if we have a Southstein Highway Committee formed yet, do we? Well, we created one, a, 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 yeah, we did have one initially. Tom Carson probably can re, uh, talk about that, but um, uh, what's her name? Um, Cindy. Cindy. Cindy was, was kind of on that. And uh, Gabe from- Gabe D'Amico. Uh, yeah, Gabe D'Amico. So there was a committee originally it started. Adam, you were- Adam, you were on, right? Adam, you were there. the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we got to the point where we, we were asking ourselves, are we gonna become an actual committee? I think is, um, is where I remember. I don't think we actually formed an actual committee. I think we were, uh, I think after our DOT conversation, it was kind of a wet blanket and it kind of- And that's right, that's what, that. that's what uh, brought it to an end was the DOT. Well, uh, we need to pump, uh, life in it there's some energy there and if there's energy um we can we can review things and i know that um again cindy jacobs on our last conversation our last meeting she outlined some items um i know that tom carson has been actively um involved with that as well uh, there are some uh meetings coming up next week i'm talking about maybe tom if you want to spend a few minutes i've got some of the research that you've got in front of me maybe just kind of share with the group I know we're still at the 30,000 feet level. We're not at, at the at, at, at grassroots, but um, if you want to share some of those things, I thought they were pretty interesting. Yeah, this has to do with the Greater Hartford Mobility Study. Um, I've been imploring folks in the last few months, you know, to, as folks in town, to kind of become engaged because of the ideas that they're throwing around. I mean, they're really big picture ideas that'll, you know, impact you know, or mostly infrastructure ideas that'll impact the region for decades. You know, I don't know, you know, where the money's going to be coming from, what projects they're ultimately going to approve, but there are dozens and dozens of things that they're considering, um, large and small. They got an $11 million grant from the federal government to study uh, mobility in the Hartford area. And they came out I, you know they were they finished with phase one which was like an information gathering phase i guess and now they're in the phase two and if you go to the, their website they do have um a bunch of projects they have a map it's a little bit confusing to navigate but they have maps with little plot points where you can click on um different proposed projects that have made it to phase two so um Several of them uh, impact Weathersfield and which ones are going to get priority, you know, and, and, and which ones are feasible. You, I really have no idea, but I think as a town, we just need to stay attuned to what they're doing. And if there are certain things that we'd like to see done, um, we should promote them. And, you know, I, I circulate a list to some people, but, but it's as small as sort of adding sidewalk to charter road and a buffered bike lane on the Silestine highway um a bike path along 515 from Weathersfield Cove to uh, a transit junction maybe the new rail station that's going to be in Newington um proposal to you know convert the freight line into a passenger rail line that may go not only from Hartford to Middletown but ultimately down to old Saybrook um, so they're, you know, and 
replacing the Putnam Bridge, widening 91 South, you know, so it's, and, but the bigger projects and a lot of them have to do with Hartford have to do with capping 91, a tunnel under Hartford, you know, they have proposals for a bridge in, over, you know, over the Connecticut River from Cromwell connecting Route 9 to Route 2, you know, and, and so uh, again, you're like, shake your head sometimes, say, I don't, you know, again, not all these are going to fly and they're going to have a lot of resistance, but some of them are pretty exciting. So they have, uh, they've scheduled right now, there are three online uh, information sessions. One of them is later today. One of them is tomorrow. And then one of them is the 19th. Um, I think the 19th. So if you go to their website, they haven't, or you follow them on their Facebook page, they, as far as I know, they might've released the links to those online discussion forums. I haven't seen it yet. I think the one today is it, I don't know, is it at five o'clock? Um, but it just makes sense for people to kind of pay attention is, is what I'm saying. And if there are certain things that we want to see done, we should make it known to them that this as a community or something we support. Um, you know, and the reason that, you know, the, the bike lane, uh, the buffered bike lane on the Silestine Highway idea in Weathersfield and Rocky Hill, um, I think is is one to pay attention to not only because it increases mobility and it gets people out of cars if they need to be. I mean, a lot of people say, "Wow, you can't put a bike lane on the Silestine Highway," but it, if it's something that they believe is important, I think it represents maybe a change in thinking at DOT at some point as to how we're going to view that road, and it would automatically. Um, you know, any kind of a buffered bike lane would reduce the width of that road by 10 feet, it would slow traffic down, I think it would make it a more pleasant trip through Weathersfield. So I think it has real economic development benefits that we not have a highway, you know, cruising through our town, you know, we slow it down and, and we and we narrow it and we make it better for bikers and for walkers and for buses, and whatever other modes of transportation, not just cars that are zipping from A to B. It's something I talk about all the time. So but in addition, if, if they're willing to do it, that's all federal and state money. That's no town money involved at all in any of that. So that's one of the reasons why I like that project. Bike paths and a lot of other things are exciting for other reasons. You know, they talk about the one that may go from Newington to Weathersfield Cove. And it says we might connect to a potential riverfront bike path. And that's also being studied. So I, I just, I, I, a lot of times I look at economic development and I see these big you know, transformative infrastructure projects is being critical to the way our community is going to be remolded, you know, over the next 50 years, you know, and so I think we need to stop thinking about today and tomorrow sometimes and think a little bit farther out when a lot of us won't even be walking this planet, you know, so it's like, and especially if you think that it's going to take a long time for these things to get going, but I think we need to start thinking, um, you know, a little bit you know, a little bit, a little bit further out, but that's that I'll, I, if I get a link, I'll circulate it to everybody for um, those online information sessions, but it's a greater Hartford mobility study. You can go to their website and get all this information. So, uh, you know, um, obviously reading the information that Tom provided is critical and Tom, thanks again for your research on this. Um, but getting a seat at the table, I think is what you're saying, Tom, that resonates really the most with me. Um, and having a formalized seat at the table. So between EDIC or RDA or town planning or whatnot, I think we need to be attending these meetings and staying on top of them because again, some of these projects went right through the town of Wethersfield um, and I love the idea of federal money and not our money. Um, and if it's available um, and we can be there to help craft Maybe some of the stuff that they're talking about, I think, is really important. So, I don't know, Bonnie or or Joy or Denise or or whatever, how that would work. But we probably should formalize something to at least get it on a, the an agenda that when these meetings come up, that we're at the meetings and we're viewing them, unless that's already been done and maybe it already has been. Well, we I, I know what I do with council is I just forward it to them as I get invites. I just forward everything over to them and say, if you want to sign up, let us know. Uh, and that's to the council, correct? Yes, but again, that's on all different. I'm just saying you could we could do the similar thing for EDIC. Yeah, I, I think we should. I think you know, um, I 
I've got my, not my head in the sand, but pretty darn close to it on, on the amount of, especially compared to the research that Tom is doing, he um, eats, sleeps and breathes us. So a lot of this stuff is important. Um, and I, I didn't personally, I've never recognized this particular scenario because I wasn't aware of how deep this study has gone. So um, I'd be more than happy to, if, if I've got time to be able to sit and, and look at those meetings and I would make that, if you can do that fine, that'd be great. Judy, you had a question? I just an anecdote to add to what Tom said. I was driving down the uh, Salestine the other day and a biker, but uh, somebody on a bicycle was actually going down the sidewalk on uh, the Salestine, which was very safe. But then he came to a point where a property owner had not cleaned off the sidewalk and instantly he had to bolt out into the highway. Um, he was very lucky nobody was coming, but that's, you know, that's a hazard and that validates Tom's um, idea of the bike lane. You know, we're just very car centric, you know, and we're all guilty of it, you know, and, and, you know, I work in New Haven and, you know, it, every time I'm in my car, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm like, why am I doing this? You know? And so if you can make it easier for people to get out of their cars, and especially when you look at it from an equity perspective, when you look at it from people who live in the apartment buildings or in the houses on the Silestine Highway, the people that work in other neighborhoods, maybe work in the South End or live in the South End of Hartford, but work on the Silestine Highway, just getting to and from uh, work and home. And there's no safe way to do it right now when it comes to like the like the our major commercial center, you know, it, it, it's like you can kind of cut through and through back neighborhoods and stuff. But at certain times, if you want to get anywhere to any of the businesses on the Silestine Highway, unless you're hopping on a sidewalk on your bike, which you really shouldn't be doing, um, it's the only safe way to do it. And and so that's that's one of the reasons why I think we need to start thinking more about just um yeah, you know, this isn't about car travel as much as it's just general mobility, people on bikes, people walking, people in wheelchairs, people, you know, everything. So, um, so that's, that, that's why I find those projects to be exciting. And it also, it gives you an opportunity, but like when you do a project like that, you're, you're, you're completely redoing the, the, the street itself, you know, and, and you're putting money into that kind of infrastructure and you're not just talking about lane widening or anything else. And, you're, um, you're, you're sculpting it a little bit more to make it more attractive for everybody. Sage words, Mr. Carson. Um, we just need to act on uh, whatever we can do. And I, if we form, and you know, we, we, I think I'd like to wait till Cindy's around next week, but if we wanna form a, an actual um, council or a subcommittee, I should say, for Southstein Highway, you know, this would be, you know, staying on top of this uh, mobility program would certainly be one charge of that particular subcommittee to make sure that if we need seats at the table, they could certainly come in from that committee. Um, Mark, and, if I can interrupt for a minute. We, we did form a subcommittee, Silestine, and... Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah, and, and Cindy uh, became the uh, chair of that subcommittee. I did sort of ask her, but I didn't know if she had... Yeah accepted it specifically so if she has then that's great yeah and, okay. and just to let you know we had a quick meeting with her um, because she wasn't going to be available today and we're focusing right now on um picking a section of silestine to start with um uh, you know not tackling the whole strip um so i'm going to compile a list of the building and business owners from church to mill street that's kind of where we're going to start i'm going to coordinate with deb raymond um, at the chamber to see how we overlap there. And then we're going to figure out a way to kind of reach out to this group of people and get their initial feedback on ideas. And it, um, you know, Denise had recommended like a, a, a public forum, like just invite them to a Zoom call, um, have some key questions for them or some ideas of where we wanna go and, and get some feedback. We don't wanna, make changes that nobody wants and we don't want to overlook something that's obvious to everyone else that we haven't thought of. So um, that's where we're going with this. We're in very initial, very early stages. Uh, when Cindy gets back, if we schedule another meeting, we will obviously send a note to everyone who can attend. Um, we'll pull in the Greater Hartford Mobility as part of that. Um, so. Um, great. Well, thank you for that input. I'm, I, I didn't want to, that's why I want to wait to hear and talk to uh, Cindy before <laughs> 
but if she has officially accepted, then that's great. Um, then we'll definitely get uh, on her when she comes back. You know, one of the things I did talk to Cindy about, I did talk to her um, early this week. Um, she called me and she was on vacation, so showed her commitment, um, was getting that the stakeholders on the South Dean Highway um, involved in communicating. This would allow our state reps at the state level, people that we would want to get potentially involved in one time, um, ammunition, if you will, to be able to go and talk about the needs and what we want to do in town, because we have Right now, Gabe D'Amico um, uh, is the only stakeholder that I'm aware of that has said that he really wants to see something change. And I, there has to be many more, and, but we need to get voices. So I think in order for, the, for these state reps to use their political capital, if you will, we need to really provide them with some hard data and that this is what the, the stakeholders on, and the business owners and landowners on the South Dean Highway are saying, and this is what their desire is, and we agree, and this is why we need X. So we just need to get that groundswell, if you will. Deb, you had a question? No, I, I just want to uh, make a comment that um, at our last chamber me meeting, Joya joined us along with Dan O'Connor. And we discussed the South Dean project. And Dan had some great ideas, just throwing that out there. So, um, and uh, so Joya and I have, uh, had a, a little sub meeting afterwards, and I'm going to be reaching out to the chamber members who are on the Salestine and ask that exact question that you're you're saying. You know, what, what's the obvious that we're missing? What don't they? You know, just get their input on all that. Um, and later on in the meeting, I'm going to introduce Pat DePerry, who's the president of the chamber, and she's interested in helping with this project as well. So we we have a good interest in this. Great. Um, it would be good to grab Dan O'Connor, maybe see if he would be happy to sit on that subcommittee uh, meeting with us. I think that having a voice from the council would be great. Um, you might want to just reach out to him, um, especially if he has good ideas. We like good ideas. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on 6A, South Dean Highway Committee? I think we're good. Okay. Uh, new flyers for Y Weatherfield and the pre-approval process. Joya? Yeah, one of the things I've um, been putting together is some marketing materials and some of them can be printed so that we can mail them out or have them on a, a rack somewhere. Um, but I'm also envisioning them being added to our website. Um, I briefly spoke to Jesse, shared you know, a draft of these. Denise, I don't know if you can put them up on the screen. Um, and you know, it makes it more visual, more colorful to look at something like this, something to give to brokers, to attract businesses, why you would wanna come here and answer some of those initial demographic questions, population, things like that, uh, you know, average median income, all those things that uh, brokers or developers look for when they're coming to town and even some businesses wanna know that. So that's the why Weathersfield. Um, Julia, Julia, before I forget, because I'm I'm getting old well as well, so I will forget. <laughs> on, on your flyers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a good spot, and I'm happy to do uh, do that, is to put them in the uh, Keeney Memorial because there's a right. So I'm happy yep. to help you with that. Okay, great, thank you, Denise. Are you able to pull them up, or can I just share a screen? Um, yeah, Julia, you can share your screen. I'm having a problem with my second monitor. Okay. Okay, so the first one that came up here is, um, so the, the, the second flyer I did was the pre-approval process that we have. And it, it's such a great process. The application is thorough, but it's a lot of reading. So I was thinking, why not have something shorter, easier to look at real quick that would attract people to say, oh, they have a pre-application process. Let, let me look at it, right? So I did something, again, this is all draft mode. So please bear with us if there's typos or anything missing, but you know, so the front, this would just be a, a thin kind of like rack card, um, you know, start early, it's free. I'm just trying to give attract somebody to the program. Why are we great for developers? Why do people like to work with us? Well, we'll do all this for you. 
we will work with you before you come to town, before you've spent a lot of money exploring. Um, it helps you understand the codes, the regulatory requirements, preliminary plans, um, you know, and it, it walks you through high level the process. And then the other side would just tell you what the process is and then our contact information. And I don't know if I can shrink this a little, I'm having trouble, um, but that would give you an idea of how how the pre-approval process would look and it would just be a two-sided thin card easier to hand out and again if it's on our website it'll just show up perhaps like with this showing and you'll want to click it and that's we're just i'm just trying to make things more user-friendly visual for people the why weather uh, okay the town profile will be available that's just something done by um, advanced ct uh nope I don't happen to have my Y Weathersfield. I'll stop sharing for now. Hi, why don't you have Y Weathersfield? I don't know why. Let me find it. <laughs> um, well, one of the things I, I think that, that re, the cliff notes, if you will, of the of our planning process, I think is great. Uh, most developers have ADD, like in spades. So I'm and 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 it's it's almost a joke. But um, I don't know if guys like Joe, Joe Silo or Mike Panic or some of the other developers who. We work with in town that have had um, uh, we've had good relationships with our quotes that we could get from them as well. You know, Joe Sulo, blah blah blah, or Mike Panic, or the who's the fellow that developed the um, uh, the um, the furniture spot on South Dean Highway. It begins That's with the no, um, thinking of somebody else. Anyway, but to get the developers who we have helped that we know are saying good things about us, maybe getting a quote on some of that stuff too. People love quotes um, or, or references, if you will. I think it's great, Joya. So the why Weathersfield thing, um, we'll have to we'll have to wait um, to take a look at that. No, give me a minute. I'll pull it up. <laughs> no problem. If you want, I'll keep talking. I was trying to give you some filler. Um, yeah. I think it's great. Anything we can do to market the town? And again, this kind of goes back to what we had in that earlier meeting today. That developers are hearing great things about us, and it's you know legit. So why not spread the uh, spread that information? Okay, this is the Y Weathersfield brochure. It's a trifold. Um, again, it's a draft. I just grabbed pictures I could find that we have on our planning drive from past photo contests or whatever they're from. Um, so this would be a trifold. This is the front cover, middle, you know, and then the back. So we want to just highlight why you would want to be here business friendly, community oriented, centrally located, et cetera, right? And then the inside or the other side, as it folds, you have the demographics, a best place to live, population, medium home value is important to people to know what kind of uh, money is around. Um, and then centrally located, listing the different routes that are available. Ignore this 15, it just didn't delete. Um, on this page, you know, we have a facade improvement program pre-application review process, permit assistance, a very active chamber, et cetera. Um, and then just a small blurb about our history, which I pulled, I think, from the um, historic Weathersfield website. So not reinventing much here, just trying to reuse. And I thought um, on this page, I grabbed, a, which is a fuzzy <laughs> picture of historic Weathersfield and partnered it with the newest development to show that we have both in town and where we wanna go. So just wanna get some feedback what people think. Um, I can send out draft copies for you to look at, but um, like I said, they're been working on that. Um, I think the more visual we can get, especially on our website, if we can have visuals of a, of a flyer to click and it opens up into something bigger, it's gonna attract people even on the Great Elm or whatever to look at as opposed to a lot of words. Um, I'm, I think it's I think they're great. Um, please forward them to Judy because Judy I know will send them directly to Trader Joe's. Um, <laughs> so I'm not giving up the ghost there, Judy. Um, exactly just, what we talked about. Um, just popped in my brain. 
Um, I think that's great stuff, Julia. Um, who is going to be? A, a, are you going to? Who do you? Wh whose insight do you want or feedback on this? Um, you've got a great start there. It might be finished, but um, anybody? Uh, how are you um, looking for data? Can you give it to the marketing committee. I, I could send it to everyone, and I get fifty responses and edits. I don't. <laughs> okay. It's, it's fine. I just want everyone to know they're they're draft. So please don't forward them around um, yet in case there's typos or errors in some demographic I put some some fact. I think it's great. I think I'm getting to the to the council. I know I, I think the mayor was on or may have uh, may not be any longer, but get oh there you are Mike. Um, getting that to the council as well uh, would be great. So they see, you know, that, that's great work. Um, okay. any and questions? I envision doing similar flyers if you if everyone thinks it's worth my while to do that, um, you know, for the facade program maybe for tax incentive if we want to really advertise that I, that's always a double-edged sword yeah. um again different programs we have i'd like to do a flyer or a visual on the website for it so agreed mark if you uh, i would say send it to the marketing committee and they should have comments back at the next meeting okay will do um, we'll need to get a um, a marketing meeting together. Um, we'll do that at the end of the uh, at the end of this, if you don't mind. Um, great, good stuff, Joya. Thank you. Any questions for Joya on those two pieces? All right, great. Uh, salute to business, September twenty first, twenty twenty two. Anybody? Um, We're just uh, proposing a date right now. It seemed. Yeah. Um, to work well in October for everyone, uh, you know, to do it earlier than 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 to do it at the holidays, uh, with uh, not knowing what COVID's going to be doing at that point of the year. It'd be nice to have a date where we know we could be outside if we had to, or just have a nice informal gathering outdoors, outdoor, indoor, or in a tent yeah. again. Um, so that's what this is for is just to propose this date and get some feedback and we will figure out where after we have a date well i'm 100 percent for moving the date from the holidays i thought the holidays was nice um but uh cold weather or inclement weather could affect people and a lot of people have other stuff going on and i think you know i will let everybody vote on the next venue i thought the venue that we used was great to be indoors and outdoors but we can consider other places as well. But I think it was a great event. I, speaking, you know, for um, the river, the nice thing about it is that you literally can say there's only 100 tickets available. I think it was the was the max for the room. Um, so we can get people. They're going to respond. We can get it up and get the room filled really quickly. Um, I do remember. Um, I can't remember. I wanted to give her credit. I can't remember. But um, and this goes back to our communication possible czar or social media czar that there were um, um, people that were being awarded that if the public knew more about it, more people may have come uh, to that event. But a lot of people did not know who the awardees were uh, that evening because we kind of kept it to ourselves, so to speak. So that would just be another reason why we really need to get more focused on our communication. I won't beat that horse anymore. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, I, the date I think is, is great. People are back from vacation. It's still nice out. Um, anybody have any issues on, on making that September 21st? Do we need to make a, a motion that we, um, um, take and just go for that date? If you guys think that's a good date, I certainly don't have any issues with it. Um, do we need to get that sophisticated, um, Bonnie or no, can we just no, say no, it's September 21st. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll add that to the town guide and calendar so there's a save the date. Um, and then Denise and I will explore uh, options for locations. Beautiful. Okay, any other questions on salute to business? All right, on to 7A town guide and calendar. Denise? Uh, we're really wrapping up the process at this point. We're definitely later than we normally are in the year. Um, I think the only thing that I'm waiting for is uh, one a financial document um, and the uh, town manager's assistant and I are gonna meet tomorrow to discuss this and get everything up to the vendor. We should have 
uh, the final copies in hand in the next week and a half. Okay. Great. Any questions on town calendar? Okay, state of the town. Um, I can speak to that. Um, so we postponed the January 20th, originally dated for January 20th, state of the town due to obvious reasons with COVID. Um, we uh, decided not to have it Zoom like we did last year. It just was not the same. So I think uh, Mayor Rell and Bonnie uh, agreed with that when I reached out to them on that decision. So we're hoping to have it in February, March. Uh, we're gonna see how this virus calms down and, and reschedule that. Great. Any other questions or comments regarding the state of the town? Thank you, Deb. Okay, reports, uh, we'll go to our interim town manager. We want her to stay forever, but we have to keep saying interim. No, with this weather, this girl's going home as soon as she can. <laughs> South Carolina looks, when I talked to my husband, oh, it's 70 degrees. It's kind of like, yeah. Uh, I'm all set, Mark. Nothing to okay. say. Great. Um, our town council liaison. Uh, is Mr. Pentelos here? I think we're no. down to Pentelos today. Um, Anybody have any uh, information regarding um, from the council um, that we should know about? Um, anything pressing, Mayor? No, you guys uh, nailed a lot of stuff uh, when it comes to EDIC, um, Silestein Highway, ARPA funding. Um, actually, I should probably do EDIC, SDH, and ARPA, keep it all in with the acronyms. Um, no, you guys covered a lot of bases. Um, Bonnie didn't have much to say. Uh, Council-wise, we did, as you know, and you reported on the tax incentive program. Um, I do have some names for Bonnie. I will share uh, of a subcommittee group for the ARPA. Um, I think I came up with a, a couple folks for that. <clears throat> so we'll have that subcommittee working. As you know, we get about $7.6 million nowhere near the 120 that New Haven got, but uh, um, we can do some pretty good things, include you guys on some uh, capital improvements needs to be in, uh, included. Um, Bonnie has reached out to all the department heads on their priorities. So um, we'll also include the, uh, the public and engage uh, their um, concerns as well. We're not concerns, but their ideas. Um, yeah, we're just hopeful that uh, you know, this variant uh, goes down as quickly as it came, and um, we'll be back into in-person meetings uh, at some point. Um, I do want to, you know, give a hats off to the town staff, uh, our emergency um, management folks, as well as volunteers and um, staff. They came in on overtime last Monday, which was a holiday for uh, um the mask and test kit distribution at the Weathersfield High School. There was some hiccups from the state and uh, we overcame those at a last minute uh, drop off to the town. And uh, I forget the first round, Bonnie, uh, 1300 masks and, yes. or 1300 kits in the first round, second round, which was this uh, past Saturday uh, in the cold, we handed out uh, 1700 kits. So, um, doing well uh, as best we can to, to get the, the equipment into uh, residents' hands. We also provided some to the town staff, uh, emergency responders, as well as uh, public works so that there's any emergencies, our uh, town staff that need to report to those are um, tested and uh, can show up to work. Uh, that has been a big problem for us uh, staffing wise with COVID protocols, even if they're exposed or a loved one or um, a uh, close contact, they do have to stay out of work, which has been troublesome for fire department, police department and public works. So we're glad the state was able to get us these testing kits so that we can get them back. Um, as far as everything else, uh, yeah, I like the, uh, the idea of having an in-person um, uh, state of the town whenever it's safe enough to do so 
And uh, yeah, I thought the river was great last year. It might have gotten a little chilly out on the uh, deck in October, so September would be fine. And uh, um, obviously, pick a pick a good place, indoor, outdoor, combination of both, uh, will be great. So. Thanks for uh, all the hard work everybody's doing. And uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, I like to hear what uh, Mark's reporting that, uh, you know, people are looking at Weathersfield in a uh, favorable light when it comes to economic development and uh, uh, salute to all you guys for your hard work. Thank you. Um, Mark, uh, Mark and Mayor, real quick. We did give N95 masks over to the chamber, right? Deb, you have them? No, that was going to be one of my questions when it was my oh. turn. I, I never did receive them from you. Oh, Anthony, oh or... then I'll make sure, Anthony, I'm going to email them right now, Deb, so you get awesome. them, so the businesses can have them. Great. Thank we you. got plenty. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And the schools are getting a second shipment, too. Those are for uh, teachers, administrators, and students. Um, I can't stress it enough to, to folks. Don't try and stockpile them. You know, really, it's it's if you need them to get back to work, if you need them to have uh, employees get back to work because they are uh, showing symptoms, that's really the the required use of those. A lot of people are stockpiling them, uh, I think, because of uh, the holidays and people wanting to get to uh, see loved ones and family and friends. That there was a big rash uh, on um, purchasing them. Um, my hope is that the uh, Biden administration and uh, the states will coordinate to be able to, to mass produce them and get them back onto shelves soon. Kind of like the toilet paper rationing of uh, spring of 2020. Uh, stepped up production, we got them, and uh, I'm hopeful that we'll get them back again. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ms. Keene, Heritage and Tourism uh, Commission. You skip planning and zoning. Oh, that's right, J and G. Uh, Mr. Oikel, my apologies. Are you there, sir? J and G, that is George, right? Yes. So, Mark, the only oh, he is getting on. Okay, go ahead, yeah, George. I'm getting on. Didn't realize I was off. Sorry, people. Uh, Denise can probably report, but I did want to bring up something, Denise, and that was, uh, I mentioned the other night with the commission meeting was concerned, at least several of us were, we didn't do a vote on this, but that Mill Street East needs sidewalks because of the development we approved down in the meadows for the school. And a lot of the traffic for that, several hundred vehicles a day, will be coming out on Mill Street and Mill Street East requires maybe sidewalks. And of course it was discussed prior at this meeting, the need maybe for uh, uh, bike lanes even, but uh, at least the sidewalk should be extended over the railroad tracks to Middletown Ave. And I feel strongly personally about it. I brought it up and got the support of two or three commissioners. We didn't vote on it though. Did, did, did you report that, Denise, to the mayor? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Anything come of it at this point? Um, I know the town engineer and the developer are speaking about um, whether to include it in the, the final approval or not. Right. Oh, okay. That's good because the developer would have to want to do this because off-site develop off-site things and requirements by the commission, just so the people here understand, uh, you can't go too far off site on zoning approvals. Uh, and it's a question whether we could in this case. So if they volunteer to do something along that line, that would be great. But I hope something can be done. I think Mill Street is the major connector and I'm glad the town is doing something on what I call Mill Street West, because I consider it a major connector across the whole southern part of town, uh, especially north of 91. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Mark, the only thing I wanted to add in addition, um, the Planning and Zoning Commission at their meeting in the beginning of November, they approved a 
temporary moratorium on cannabis establishments. Um, we currently do allow for medical marijuana establishments, but the state has um, revised some of the regulations. And in response to that, um, the town enacted a moratorium for six months um, that will expire at the end of May. The Planning and Zoning Commission is looking um, to the town council currently for advice and how to proceed. But in the meantime, we are looking to form a um, cannabis working committee and or to compile any uh, comments or concerns that any commission members may have. So if any of you are interested in being on the committee or if any of you have any comments or concerns that you'd like to share with me, um, I can forward them to planning and zoning. Has there been any, any, any applications I know uh, for um, a dispensary? I know there was one on the corner of South Dean and Wells at one point. Was there any other inquiries? So essentially because of the way that the uh, medical marijuana regulations were written, there are distance requirements from schools, uh, churches, uh, other religious institutions, and then from other individual dispensaries. So there has been an approval in the location that you're um, indicating, um, but they never did the tenant fit up. And that was for medical. Um, we have not had an application for uh, adult use cannabis. Um, and that's essentially because right now, um, you know, we don't have the regulations in place to accept that type of an application. Okay. Is the town required to accept that or is that um, uh, to accept those that, businesses? That's why we're going through this process right now. We can't, we could either craft regulations that would allow for uh, the location of that type of uh, use or, um, you know, depending on uh, the feeling of the town council, we may uh, choose to not to allow uh, those types of uses to um, to exist in town. So currently, we cannot ex currently we cannot accept an application at least until the end of May. Okay. And to follow up on Denise, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say as a commission member, I think we would all like to hear from members of this commission regarding the marijuana issue and any advice you can give us along the way. Uh, I feel more people that participate in town on this major issue, the better off we're all going to be on it and know what we're doing. So the, any, anyone that wants to speak up should, of course, let Denise know or the manager and uh, or the mayor even, and that can be all passed on. Uh, during our any uh, deliberations we're going to be making in the next six months to nine months. So I can I can forward uh, the EDIC copies of what I've just submitted for the presentation um, to town council next week um, for your review and um, comments. Yeah, the council's going to start their discussions Tuesday night, but they'll not they're not going to make any decision. This is the first time they're getting all this information, but they're gonna be weighing in. So uh, George is right, any kind of comments, uh, I'm sure they're gonna look forward to hearing from people. Okay, any other questions for uh, Mr. Oichel, Mr. Carson? I, I, yeah, I have one question. I, I probably should have brought it up earlier with development project updates, but I saw on the agenda, I didn't see the meeting, but was, um, was ABC Burger back before to ask for another extension? Um, and if, can you give us an update as to what's going on there and if they're trying to lease the property, sell the property, or if we're ever gonna have anything happen there? So uh, the, a planning and zoning commission approval is essentially good for one year to begin construction. So they um, have asked and last Wednesday they did receive approval for an extension to the time frame to begin construction for another year. Um, essentially, they really are not at this time looking to reduce uh, the footprint at all. They're just really trying to rework the interior, um, the floor plan. So 
ultimately, uh, my understanding and speaking with uh, the developer just last week and his attorney, they are absolutely still um, intending on moving forward with the project. Is there still a sign? I don't even, I haven't been by there in a little bit. Is there still a sign out in the property offering up to 6,000 square feet of restaurant approved space? Is Because that has been there because they were trying to market it. So I, I, I drove I, by just the other day and I don't recall seeing that. Okay. They may have just taken that. Uh, down I, I also, okay, George here. I, I also at the commission on that extension of the startup time, which we approved, uh, I brought up the question, did DOT really not want that to go in because of the Maple Street difficulties of exiting and then you know coming and going there below the tracks? And uh, I was told essentially that no, that uh, DOT, if they did have a concern, the developer still it wasn't expressed and they really don't have a control over whether the developer goes ahead on that. Mm -hmm. That's it, Mr. Chairman, for me. Thank you, Mr. Oikel. Uh, Mr. Carson, you all set on that, sir? Okay. Um, Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Uh, so we covered a lot of uh, what I want to talk about already, but which is great. State of the Town, Celestine Project, which I'm um, working with uh, with Joya. Um, I have to say, Joya is great to work with. I, I enjoy and she's doing a great job. Um, let's see. I'm also working with Joya on a, uh, another, I think, great project where she came up with the idea to have the high school students contact or uh, be in contact with local businesses and do videos so that the students can, you know, get some experience and the business owners can get a get a video and we're going to post them so i i'm looking forward to working with her on that project too i sent um some information out on that already but if anybody wants a student to come to their business let me know let joya know i was looking at you bryce be perfect for that um but um yeah it's i i i got several emails stating once i sent that that notice out that uh whoever thought of that initiative did it was awesome so congrats on that um i was going to ask about the mat uh, mass but bonnie already took care of that um who do uh ribbon cutting is it um who do i contact on that now denise or joya just denise? you could reach out you could reach out to me deb okay great um the um, new business that's going in, Children of America. They contacted yes. me today, and uh, I'll let you know what what they want to do. So, it's great. Yeah, that's going to be a nice addition to our town. Um, we are working on a couple of things. One is the car show, which uh, we're going to hold on May twenty second. Um, that should not be influenced by the virus, since that's an outside venue. Uh, we are going to also reinstate the best of. Um, last year we did it via a Zoom and videos, and we're hoping this year, that's why we're holding off on a date to do an in-person um, event on that. Um, and uh, last, but certainly not least, is that um, I am on a term position with the EDIC right now, and um, Pat DePerry, who is our, the president of the chamber uh, presently will now be the chamber liaison. Um, but of course, I'm still with the chamber and you can reach out to me or Pat on anything and um, uh, we'll be working together on that. So uh, Pat, I'm gonna let Pat take that over for now. Great. Welcome Pat. Thank you. Did you wanna say anything important? Well, you know, I don't know if I, it's important or not, but um, <laughs> I want I, I do want to say that I'm very excited about being um, on the EDIC, whatever this, whatever my role is, I guess is a liaison um, because I love Weathersfield and I think that the chamber along with EDIC can do an ama amazing things and I'm looking forward to participating. Great. 
great. Um, I don't know uh, if Deb shared with you, but there is an initiation expense. I think it's 20 grand, uh, Deb, but Deb's Mark, going to finance, I think. Mark, you, you. You, you always speak before it's time. Oh, oh, I thought you already said something. No, we had to do that. We had to have her sign the contract first. Understood. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at this. Um, Great. Well, welcome, um, uh, I, uh, Patricia. You'll see that um, there's a lot of initiatives that EDIC and RDA are talking about where um, where we can do a lot more work with the chamber. And Deb's done a fantastic job. Um, really, to me, I think there are two uh, lungs of the town of Wethersfield. One is EDIC and RDA. The other one is the chamber, and they're both important. Um, so I would look forward to working with you. Um, well, I will say one other thing. I agree that Deb's done a wonderful job, and um, you know, I hope to work well with all of you. Wonderful. Thank you again. Thanks for being here. Um, all right. I think that uh, gets to, I have nothing to report. Um, subcommittee reports. Are no, I'm sorry. You forgot heritage. Uh, oh, I did call in Judy. Uh, my bad. Uh, heritage. Okay. I'm sorry, Judy. Um, heritage. There was no meeting in December, so I really don't have anything to report right now. My bad. That's okay. I know where you live, Judy. I'll drop off flowers. I apologize. That would, um, that would be. Okay. Um, okay, guys. Um, again, I have again I have nothing to report on subcommittee reports. Uh, we did schedule one uh, coming up for the, um, the in two weeks. I think from today or two weeks from this coming Monday, uh, from a marketing and communications piece. Uh, we were talking about putting together a meeting uh, to discuss, um, was that the ARPA side? Is that correct? Or no, that was finance. What we, what we, we were going to do something for marketing. I can't remember what, the, what it was now. The flyers. Flyers. Very good. Um, Julia, um, if you want to do something as soon as next week, that's fine. Um, but if not, the following week is when I'll be around. Um, I think if you want to send out... Uh, Again, the flyers to everybody, obviously that would be great. I think you may have already done that. Um, do you have a, um, a a time and a day in mind? Um, I'm free the mornings of Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. I know most people like to do an eight or 8.30 morning uh, meeting. It'll be virtual, so would that work for anyone? everyone uh, what dates are you uh, suggesting the 25th 26th or 27th okay tuesday wednesday thursday yeah either more any of those mornings work i'm good on any of those mornings judy are you good too i know you're part of media uh, marketing leslie mm -hmm. i think that those are good early in the morning tuesday's good for sure Tuesday. all right we'll go for the 25th uh let's say 8 30. 8.30 marketing meeting. And do you still want to have um, channel 16 there? Because she couldn't make your last meeting, but she said she'd try for another one. I can ask. If... Uh, that would be fine. That would I'm be gonna... great. Julia, I did have one question on the coalition working with Wesley High School and the, the video department there. Do they already have a, a curriculum already built? Like, so there's a business interested, they know A, B, C, D, what they need to do, what the business owner needs to do, et cetera. Has that already been done? Yeah, so um, Chris Palazzo, who's the business teacher I'm working with, um, had incorporated this in his curriculum um, already. He was already doing stuff like this and kids uh, were, researching businesses, you know, on the internet or whatever, going after national companies, it didn't, it didn't matter. They could pick whatever they wanted. Um, so I partnered with him, like asking, well, could we do a Weathersfield focus um, maybe for one of the projects with a video component? I mean, and, and the video component doesn't have to be like film necessarily. It can also be a PowerPoint slide presentation. Uh, the kids are very creative in what they do and what they present. Uh, with, you know, voiceovers and things like that. So um, I've left that piece of it up to him. I don't want to dictate, but he already had something similar he was doing and it. This just fit right in. Did they work with the why, uh, with your why Weathersfield concept uh, to do a video or something for why Weathersfield and 
Um, the other item. Um, yeah, I have I have a ton of ideas on how to use them. So okay, <laughs> just one piece at a time. Um, I also know, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is, and this, this I'm going to steal from whoever the foreign language teacher was that my son had, I think it was last year. Um, she had the kids do a video for a tourist from Italy coming, like tell them about the town. And they had to put together a little 30 second, I don't remember, maybe one minute slideshow of their top three or five favorite places in town and 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 narrate it all in Italian. That was the purpose, was to use Italian practically. And I thought, well, wouldn't that be cool? Like just have the foreign language kids, even if we give them the script, record it in a couple of foreign languages, whatever's taught in town. So we have we have lots of ideas to partner with the schools. It's just, you know, one step at a time. <laughs> Uh, that's just one of those win, win, win uh, ideas. So that's phenomenal. Everybody wins. And you end up with a great product at the end too, which is awesome. Um, okay, um, any minutes? So we do have minutes. So you guys want to take a moment to review the minutes? Who is doing the minutes now? Are these? Joy North? did the minutes, yep. Okay. Denise, ask if they know anybody who can take minutes. <laughs> we need them, right? We're okay. desperate for people, George. So do you want to do it? Absolutely. So if anybody Let's knows see. anybody who wants to have a little part-time job, I got boards and commissions here. We're behind because it's so hard for staff to do it. So have them call our office. That would be great. Any questions or comments on the minutes? <clears throat> okay. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Thank you, Tony. Somebody second? Deb Raymond, thank you, second. All those in favor, say aye or give me a thumbs up. All right, we're good. Yeah, okay. I need to abstain. I wasn't I wasn't here at that meeting. Uh, okay. Just... Thank you, Tom. All right, our next meeting for EDIC is Thursday, February 10th. Um, so I look forward to that. Um, this rolls into our um, redevelopment agency meeting. Uh, those that are on the RDA are Tony Martino, uh, Leslie Civitello, uh, Tom Pentelo, Judy Keene, Joy Zach, George Oikel, uh, Pat Penelo, um, and then uh, Ken Slater and, and whatnot were going to be here. Bonnie, I think we were talking about- um, Wait a minute, um, wait. Just, I would say everybody else can leave. <laughs> right, um, if you, uh, if you weren't, names weren't called, you may um, go to recess and go play kickball. Um, if not the rest of you, you gotta stay. Um, all right, bye-bye, see you, Deb. Have a good um, afternoon. Thank you. Mark, I ha also have to leave in about uh, 20 minutes. Yep. I won't be here. I think um, this agenda is fairly quick. Um, at least I believe it is. Um, so I call to order the RDA meeting for December 9th. Um, uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, again. Um, so we did um, have an election of officers. The motion was made to appoint me as chair uh, and, uh, and seconded by Le uh, Leslie Civitello. Um, the redevelopment roles and responsibility, we were gonna have 10 Join us. Was that still an opportunity, Bonnie? Which one? Yeah, just, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think we were talking about having Ken. Um, I know he did visit with us um, last um, uh, meeting. Was he going to be coming and sharing any more uh, with us this no, meeting? No, every minute you spend with him, it's checking. It's money, 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 money. <laughs> okay. I, it was just on the agenda um, as of this point. Um, um, so the, um, from an other business category, um, we did discuss redevelopment opportunities, um, um, vacant, unimproved land, as it talks about looking at the financial aspects. I think when Ken was with us, one of the things we did talk about was visiting, uh, 130 and, uh, 132 of the general statutes, which covers what the RDA can do and can't do. Um, um, 
I really have nothing really to deep to discuss uh, at this point from an RDA perspective. Um, uh, did you guys have? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think you might have an old agenda. Um, is that possible? Today, today's today's agenda had um, election of a vice chair as I well. Uh, well, maybe I do have an old one. That's why I was asking about Ken Slater because I thought we were redoing that. It's not like deja vu all over again. Um, <laughs> Bear with me. So we'll probably hold off on the election of officers until yeah. next month. Yep. Yeah. Um, I do not have a copy of the agenda. For some reason, I got an old copy was printed out with the for today's agenda. I don't know how that happened, but it did. Bear with me for one second. Denise, can you pop it on the screen, maybe? Yeah. Mark, if you want, I can do a quick overview while you're doing that. Yeah, why don't you do that while I see if I can find or if somebody wants to send me that I can see if I can print it off here. I can have some in my office. Kevin. I think uh -huh. that we had sent um, out to everybody um, the information on the last referendum that was done with potential properties. So I think what this group's gonna need to do is start looking at that presentation uh, are we looking at the same properties? Obviously, fun zones all set, but are we looking at the same properties? Are we looking at new properties? Um, at the next meeting, they're going to be able to make um, Mike Zielinski, who used to be on the Redevelopment Authority. He's now the CEO, um, the Chief Executive Officer of Riverfront uh, Recapture. He's going to come to your meeting just to talk about what they went through to get those two items on the referendum and uh, you know things I think he learned as pros and cons of what they did so I thought it would be great to have Mike speak to all of you and then uh, I it's really going to be your roles to decide if there are any properties you want to start thinking about to have a future referendum uh, to start developing them um, so, I mean, that's really kind of the overview. The most important thing all of you could do right now is look at um, the information that was sent out on the previous referendum. Any comments, guys, regarding uh, properties in town from a referendum perspective? So the Jordan Lane property, how, how uh, hopeful are you all with that? Currently. Hopeful, hopeful or helpful? Hopeful. Hopeful, okay. With um, the Jordan Lane. Yeah, um, uh, we have had some conversation uh, with a potential developer there. Um, it's, it's not a finalized uh, opportunity, uh, but there is, um, there is some um, action there. There are some things that need to be um, reviewed um, uh, and, and worked through, but there is a potential opportunity for a project there um, it's just not ready for prime time um, at this point, but there is activity there, Leslie. All right, because I think that was one of the ones that we were looking at with a microscope or magnifying glass, that one and the um, Silas Dean Highway, the old Weight Watchers building was yeah, the other I one. Think, I forget where I was, but I, you know, I was at the town council meeting when we did, uh, got the tax incentive program through. The good news um, is that we're running out of properties, uh, which is good. Um, uh, and the properties that we do have, um, although we haven't broken ground yet at 1,000 uh, 1, uh, Salestine Weight Watchers, there is a new owner there that is planning on spending money. So we will see um, opportunity there. Metaplex, as I said, again, it may not be a deal, but there is a very interested party and there are some things to iron out for that deal to go forward. Uh, Masonic, you know, I know that those guys are trying uh, as hard as they can um, in, in their own way, if you will, uh, to make that a go. So there is action there. Um, so, I mean, those are kind of the three albatrosses, if you will, that we have left to, to work through. Um, I, think, I think there's also that one property, the 1652 Berlin Turnpike, the corner not in Berlin Turnpike. Oh. Yeah, De Denise is right. Definitely take a look at the Berlin Turnpike. It needs work. I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I just forget about it. It's uh, I apologize. Yeah, but that's is, part of the problem, Mark, because people do forget. 
Yeah. Of, well, isn't yeah. isn't that project? I mean, aren't they converting that that station auto dealership into a rental car agency? Is that still going forward? Here, I'm I'm gonna stop stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, they were approved to redevelop just that corner building, the the one that was the auto repair. So the the lot itself consists of the city side, the former retail um and the the package store as well so um the approval was just for the the auto facility and at this point i spoke with the applicant who had been approved um there were significant um site improvements and exterior facade improvements that needed to be done as part of the conditions of approval and frankly, I do not think that the applicant is able to um, complete the project as it was approved. And I, I, I really don't believe that that will go forward. Because I that would be critical, I think, if, if, if you know, with the last... The, the property owner is definitely, you know, the, the, he, he is willing to sell. What was the property sold for or what was it proposally sold for? I don't know what he has. The, I don't know what the number is, but I could get that. Would you do me a favor? Just forward me whatever you got on that. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever you're working on any documents. I'll just I'd like to take a peek at it. Yep. Um, it's on the it's on that property list I put together. Um, I, ah, OK, good. I can't remember if it was <laughs> one point nine or two point nine million dollars that they're asking for the whole parcel together. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, what I did was, uh, uh, in addition, the I had put together a complete list of commercial properties in town. Um, so I went through there, and I can share this with you. I haven't done it before the meeting, but I kind of pulled out things that are good, you know, like in in good shape. You know, the the new Puritan Center, the you know some of the shopping plazas, the Putnam Park, for example. Those aren't redevelopment targets. But I, I left in there some of the um, apartment buildings uh, that exist because there are developers I'm hearing looking around for projects. And you know if they can just come in and do a facade, a facelift, a facade, they're not looking necessarily to do a teardown. There are groups of developers that come in and just take apartment buildings that have you know seen better days and need like a, a facelift. Um, or some interior improvements. And they will come in and do that and not necessarily disrupt the existing tenants. They want tenants, you know, in place. They will, they will do work and rehab. So I left a bunch of those on the list, thinking maybe that could be a focus for us as well. You know, we don't necessarily have to find a, you know, 1000 Silas Dean or a, you know, the Berlin Turnpike properties where we're looking at either a complete teardown or a complete overhaul. Um, so I can I can share that list with you after I didn't um, get to it before this meeting, unfortunately, but I can do a Google share um, on the drive. How big is that lot on the uh, Salestine Highway, uh, excuse me, on the Berlin Turnpike? Do, we, do you guys know acreage wise? Yeah, I don't remember offhand. I'm sorry. I can get that. Yes, Go Judy? Ahead, Judy? Um, one of the other properties in town that I really feel needs attention and uh, needs a better tenant, needs more tenants, is where the price price right is at the corner right. of where uh, yep. the chicken Absolutely. place is now. That right. that uh, whole plaza, uh, I mean, price right's fine. It it, it they do yep. very well there, but no, the it's rest a great of that anchor. building. Yep, and price right and Popeyes are great anchors on that corner. Yep. There's no problem yep. with them, but the rest of it brings everything down. And yep. then it's buffered by the police station on the other corner, which is beautiful as well. Like, why haven't we? brought this property up a little bit. And it could be one large business or one one large uh, open business, or it could be like yeah. stalls even inside. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's all kinds of uh, ideas for that. I, yeah. I had thought about Trader Joe's for there, but they don't want to be next door to price right. Mark, the property on the Berlin Turnpike is 3.13 acres. Okay. Judy, just so you know, we're going to be uh, doing a Zoom with the rep from Colvest who owns the price right uh, plaza to get that going. Uh, Great. See, and Great. See, what, see what their reaction is. So, yep. I mean, uh, so at least we're going to get out there and say, look, we want to help you, but what's happening with the property? 
Could you and, make and an agenda another... item on that? I'm sorry. Um, I, that 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 a real nitpicky issue I have with the price right plaza are the two for lease signs that are on each side of that building that have been up for years and they are terrible looking. And even I thought for sure that once Popeyes went in, they would have ripped one down just because it's blocking that new building. But can you, I don't know what our guidelines are for how long you can have these four lease signs out. You know, I, you know, I know that we want them to be leased, but how many people are actually leasing a spot because they see a four lease sign in front of a complex that big and they are, they've been up for years and sometimes they get knocked down in bad weather and then they just prop them back up again. So if, if you can sort of just relay that to them, I just, you know, it's one of those things that I shiver at every time I see it. The signage all over the Silas Dean Highway needs to be looked at. Um, we need to uh, do some more better enforcement. And uh, those are large, but there's so many small ones all along. They're litter. They're litter. So we're going to call that the anti-shiver and litter proposal because I don't want Tom to shiver. Well, uh, they, if they spend a little money and they replace the signs, you know, I, I mean, I, even they did that on the Weight Watchers simple. building eventually, you know, and it's a simple thing to do. It just and it doesn't cost a lot of money. And, and it, I just don't think anybody is paying any attention to it up there. And, you know, I don't know how many people are paying attention to it down here besides me, but it just bothers me. Uh, and my guess is if you call and say, could you put new signs up? They go, oh yeah, we'll do that. And they have a new sign up in like a day, um, uh, out of sight, out of mind. They probably forgot about it too. Um, um, I don't have the agenda in front of me. I haven't been able to find the agenda for today. I, again, I apologize for having that older one. Um, you know, I know when you talk about what's the appetite for referendum, Bonnie, I know, um, what, are your, what are your thoughts? there on um, well, this is just from past first of all you got to remember this the schools are talking about doing a referendum in april which would be huge and i still haven't heard from the superintendent if that's a go or not but i mean the other thing quite frankly something like this i don't think it's a good i don't think it's good i mean the economy is horrendous there's so much going on with covid and jobs and the shortages and inflation um, so I would think you're going to want to wait. Plus, you got a lot of work to do to even get to that point. And oh, yeah. next meeting, Mike Zelinsky will talk about this. Denise, how long did it take us to ever get two year and a half, two years to ever get? Uh, yeah, it took about a year and a half to get to the point where we went through the public hearings and actually got oh, to the plans. Room. Plus, we got to get plans and all right. that. So you got plenty of work to do. And hopefully by then, Mark, the economy's turned around. Well, yeah, I'm. I'm not. Frankly, I'm. I'm glad to hear you say that because I. I think I'd rather just find interested developers and help developers go in, and do the work rather than us having to prop things up ourselves. Um, I think there's plenty of there's a lot of money out there on the development side, um, and um, so I wouldn't be for anything. I mean, I know I know it's a lot of it's a lot of work. I'm not afraid of the work, but um, I'm I'm not for anything right now. I don't think we're in a desperate scenario. I think we have a couple of interesting projects that we could, could be working on within the next year in town. Then so. the other thing is, quite honestly, then you may not want this group to meet for a while. Um, uh, that's, uh, it's an interesting, let me think about that because I don't want to meet unless we've got something that we're going to, we can actually take action on. You know, I think going back um, and at least I can refer to the old um, uh, agenda, you know, th those two sections, uh, 130 and 132 of the general statutes of what an RDA can do, take a look at that because it, that is a roadmap on what we potentially could do as, a, as an agency. And I just don't see that we have any big projects um, that we'd want to get our head around. Um, but I, I think you're right, Bonnie. I think if we, I don't want to have a meeting just to go, we don't really need to have a meeting. Right. Um, right. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Councilor Martino, you've been very quiet today, which makes me scared. Um, um, can you share any thoughts? You've been around this, this block a few times. <clears throat> Just to go with the Berlin Turnpike project as an example. Uh, that's gonna be a tough one to put through. I mean, I was going door to door campaigning when we were, the referendums were going through before on both uh, 
1000 Silestein and Berlin Turnpike. And the biggest complaint about Berlin Turnpike was the fact that uh, they were gonna have all the traffic come out onto Knott Street, which every morning is a bear to begin with for people trying to get on five and 15 to go to work. Uh, and they you know, looked at it as a safety hazard with putting apartments there where it was you know such a speedy highway because it's a lot you know there are miles per hour is a lot more than silent steam uh so i mean that's the only one but if we're going to look at that it would have to be towards more business than residential to go in there and you'd have to find a developer that would want that and to go along with bonnie you know with the schools coming forward with a referendum that'll probably pass versus a referendum for redevelopment. You know, they're willing to spend for the kids, but that's about it. So, uh, you know, I would think it'd be tough for us to do anything. I mean, we could find a developer who wants to go in there and tell them, you know, and give them all the cons that kept it from succeeding before so they can work on it up front. I think that would be better for us. Uh, thank you, Tony. Bonnie, what's the number from uh, the potential referendum from the schools? I know it's millions, but I don't know how many. I don't remember. I haven't seen it, Mark, since I've been here. Okay. I mean, they're talking about all the elementary schools. So. Yeah, I think it's like $70 million or something, yeah. like because it's totally rebuilding two schools and rehabbing the other three or other two and then mothballing one. Um, I should have just gone to Tom. I'm sure Tom had that number in his head. Um, you are the Mr. Whoopi of our commission, by the way. You have everything in the closet. Um, um, I, I'm going to probably um, agree with what Bonnie is saying, is that RDA, unless we've got something really focused uh, that fits inside the box that the RDA is, I don't know why we would, we, would, uh, we would meet. And I think maybe we should meet whenever something potentially could come up the pike that might deserve our attention or sits inside the purview of what the RDA can do. What are your thoughts, guys? I would agree. I agree. Tom? I agree with that. Yeah, and I also like uh, what Joy was saying about smaller properties and maybe approaching, you know, the, those property owners. You know, I talk about the Byright Plaza or the, the office supply building where Patsy's is located, you know, and, and that there's certain properties that, that really could, could use a real... Um, more than a facelift maybe even but might you know could even be redeveloped in some way um you know the, with, with the price right plaza was i'm not the price right with the buy right plaza you know there's a whole stretch of empty parking lot that's never used to the right of it you know up, up above where gravers creeps all of its keeps all of its trucks so it seems like there's more potential in that property um but i think if we look at some of the tired buildings you know that might just be be something that we can, you know, some of these smaller projects is something we can embrace as well with redevelopment. Yeah, Sanjay Singh, I mean, he would love to even buy that building. Um, I'm not talking at a school, the Price Right building. I mean, it's the owner of the property. I mean, it's, it's, it is an eyesore. You know, the only saving grace is Sammy does a good job with his business there, but um, anyway, um, I agree. Well, I mean, you know, and this, this is a way like, cause I, cause I've heard that in the past that, that he's not happy with it and he'd like to buy it, but he also expanded, you know, and it's the type of thing, maybe we could use some redevelopment money and move him out of there and move him into the board or something like that, you know, and, and then, then, then put some pressure on the landowner to do something about it, you know, if the tenants aren't happy. So that's, I mean, that's, more outside the box thinking then I think we need to go but I think that's those are the types of things we can think about also to put pressure on on property owners Denise or Julia have we had any conversation with that owner of that property of the, of the where Sammy's uh, liquor store is anything recent not really you know I know that um we have approached uh the owner several times um and I know that Sammy himself is very interested um, because he takes up such a large portion of the plaza. Right. Um, I, I'm not really sure why the owner has not taken advantage of it. Are they local? Are they a local owner? Are they out of state, out of town? Um, it's probably been about two years now since I have had a conversation, but it was local. 
Um, uh, do me a favor and just forward me if you guys can just send me the record of the owner of the property. Um, and, you know, we've had a little success on reaching out to some of these guys and just kind of um, um, saying, hey, would you if we could type of scenarios, it's already starting to bear a little fruit, as you know, so maybe I should reach out and nudge the owner. Just, there to uh, uh, on a small note, um, Sammy did come in to design review uh, just last week to get um, signage approval. So the damage sign that just says LIQ instead of liquors, he is going to be removing that in the next few weeks. And then he's going to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the additional two box signs that he had. So there will be some improvement to the facade and new signage um, within the next month or so. Cool. Hey, Mark, maybe uh, once finance meets, maybe we should uh, consider maybe when the infrastructure money comes in down the road, if we get a piece of that to maybe, you know, look at giving that to do refacade to some businesses or buildings like that to bring them up to more appealing on the side of the state highway. Well, look at those two things. We'll get a copy of that to you, Tony, but the, the tip, the targeted investment program and the radar program, you know, those are two things kind of in that area. Mm -hmm. Again, just two proposed concepts, but right. yeah, I think, you know, frankly, to me, the easiest thing is if we could use that money as a slush fund and just kind of figure out what we want to do as we go. Um, um, and I did propose that in a general, <laughs> I should have mentioned to the other group, bless you, um, is that any of the money that the, and I want to be on record with you on this, Bonnie, any money that the, that the council would um, assign to us, that there also would be an expiration date, if you will, on the money that if there's, it comes to a certain point where, you know, we don't have a project available and there's another, the money can be used someplace else in one of the other departments that it wouldn't go to waste, obviously it could be reassigned um, or moved around. Um, but yep. we, we would find a home for that for that money, but we need to work on that. Um, so I'm gonna make a motion that the RDA, um, I don't know if disband is the right word that we go on, uh, make a motion that we uh, are on a um, hiatus uh, for a um, two month period and schedule a meeting say three months out unless something else comes up between now and then, uh, but we meet again uh, in in 90 days. So we'll take two months off and meet the third month. Um, that would be my motion. I'll second yeah. it for you. And then we can ask Mike Zielinski to be at that meeting. Okay. Um, you second that? Who second that, I'm yeah. sorry? Great, thank you, Tony. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, guys. Um, thank you for the time. That concludes. Do any correspondence? I don't even think that's on my list anymore. You don't even have put it. It doesn't even say correspondence on my thing anymore. You've actually taken it away. <laughs> oh no, it's on the last page. I see it. Okay. Um, any correspondence? Um, I just included what Tom had sent out the other day about the mobility study. Mobility. Got it right here. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. You will see what meetings coming Thanks, up. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you, guys. You, you probably want to vote on the minutes that I wasn't a part of, but you so just FYI. Oh. Okay. Motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Um, I'll, second. I'll second that. I'll abstain. Uh, all, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, turn off your computer. Adios. Thank you. Bye. Bye.